Over the past 11 years of making this show, I've come across a lot of unique accessories for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The Power Glove, the U-Force, the Miracle Piano System. But this is one that not only had I never seen before, but I doubt many other people have either. This is the Hot Seat, a small chair with a joystick attached on the armrest. It utilizes motion controls for movement, while the stationary joystick provides the A and B buttons, start, select, and turbo functions. Not much is known about the Hot Seat. It was released in 1990 by a company based out of Wichita, Kansas called Power to the Tenth Incorporated. As far as I know, this was the only product they ever released. Based on newspaper ads, the Hot Seat was only released in the Midwest region of the United States. It was sold in small chain department stores, furniture stores, and video rental stores. That's right, you could rent the hot seat weekly. As for retail cost, it's hard to say. An Illinois-based furniture store called Discount Pete's sold the seat for $35. Visions Video, an Illinois-based rental store, sold it for $90. Power to the 10th Incorporated teased hot seats for the TurboGrafx and Sega Genesis but they were never released. By 1992, Power to the 10th Incorporated was out of business, and the hot seat faded into obscurity. Although technically, it was already obscure to begin with. That's about all we know for the history, so let's take a look at the hot seat itself. It came in two colors, either black or gray. The build quality feels cheap. It's made out of hard-coated plastic. There's a rubber gasket that connects the base to the seat which allows flexibility when you move around in the chair. There's also slapped on hot seat stickers on the chair back and armrest. It's pretty clear this thing was assembled by hand. The hot seat uses a joystick that is bolted onto the armrest. By default, the rest is on the right hand side. But if you are left handed, you could drill holes on the left hand side and attach it there. The joystick itself is a modified QuickJoy NI5, a joystick made for the NES. You move your character on screen by moving around in the hot seat chair, while all the other buttons are controlled with the joystick. So how does the seat use motion controls? There's no wires or anything coming out of it. Well that's because everything is contained within the joystick unit. Technically you could detach the joystick from the seat and use it by itself. As to how the motion controls work, the unit is sealed off, so we don't know for sure, but just from feel and sound, it most likely uses tilt switches. A tilt switch uses a small cylinder with either a metal ball or liquid mercury inside. When you tilt it, the ball inside moves and makes contact with the metal electrodes at the end, which sends a signal. Tilt switches were used in a lot of early motion control devices and they aren't the most accurate or responsive, making them less than ideal for certain types of games. Power to the 10th advertised their hot seat with games like Top Gun and Rad Racer. So we know the history of the hot seat, we know how it's supposed to work, but does it work? Let's test it out with a few games. According to the box, the maximum weight the hot seat can support is 165 pounds. Even though I weigh close to 200, I'm gonna take a chance with it. The seat is pretty close to the ground, so it's kind of awkward to use if you're tall. This was definitely intended for children. Let's try a game we all know and love, Super Mario Brothers. This might sound crazy, but Super Mario Brothers worked pretty well with the hot seat. The trigger button on the joystick is used for jumping, while the front button is for fireballs and running. And that button configuration is pretty comfortable. The only issue I had is that every now and then the game thinks I'm ducking. But Super Mario Bros. is totally playable with the hot seat and, dare I say, beatable. Now let's try out my favorite Mega Man game, Mega Man 3. This one is a little more difficult considering the precise jumping and shooting required in this game. I started off with Top Man stage, like I usually do, and even that was a struggle. It was hard to just do a slide. Definitely not a good game with the hot seat. Let's show off the two games that Power to the 10th recommended you actually play with the hot seat. Out of all the games played, I'd say Rad Racer works the best. Movement is spot on with the hot seat, and you only have to worry about two buttons, the gas and the brakes. 
Plus, you can play it in 3D, which, when played with the hot seat, is peak 90s gaming. Top Gun is also perfect for the hot seat. I had no issues steering my plane, and with the joystick, it kind of does feel like you're in a cockpit. The landing sequence is still difficult, but then again, that's hard to do with a regular controller. The hot seat was an interesting idea, but motion controls weren't great back in the early 90s, and Power to the 10th Incorporated didn't seem to have enough resources to release such an ambitious device. As an adult, it's pretty awkward to use. I'd rather just have a normal joystick. Surprisingly, there was another device similar to the hot seat called the Super Chair that looks like it worked a lot better, but it never came to market. The hot seat is pretty rare, so rare in fact that it's hard to put a value on it. It's a cool piece of history, but I wouldn't recommend using it regularly for your retro gaming. It also can't really function as a regular everyday seat, unless it's for your kid. Maybe one day we'll see hot seat gaming challenges on YouTube or Twitch, where players try to beat NES games using this thing. That's all for this episode of The Gaming Historian. Thanks for watching. Funding for Gaming Historian is provided in part by supporters on Patreon. Thank you.